general relativity step by step. Right, we've got this geodesic equation here. I'm going to give you an example of it by uh, working in polar coordinates. This is going to take quite a long time. I'm going to find a geodesic in polar coordinates. So just to give you a roadmap on that, uh, we've got a point here defined by its distance and its angle theta, and I want to have some kind of a straight line going along there, and I want to use this equation here to uh, see what straight lines look like in polar coordinates. Uh, not entirely trivial, but it's not difficult, but it's not it's it's time consuming. I'm not quite sure how many screencasts this is going to take. Uh, probably at least three. I might I might be able to do it in two, but let, let, let's see. Probably three. Two or three anyway. So we need to evaluate the Christoffel symbols, I, J, K. Let's just remind ourselves what these... Well, actually, before we start, let's just remind ourselves what the fundamental, the metric tensor is. G, I, J equals 1, 0, 0, R squared. That's the R component, and that's the theta component. So in other words, ds squared equals d r squared plus r squared d theta squared. Okay, so there's the one and r squared. It's the components of your general uh, of your metric tensor in there. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put that up there just so I can refer to it. I'm going to get rid of this because we don't need that anymore. I'm going to get rid of this. Oh no, I'm not. I'm going to put that back. I, J, K equals a half G, I, L summed over L times di, G by di, X something plus di, G by di, X something else minus G by di, X something else. And let's just put the I's and the J's in. We've got an L which sums in the first place, in the second place, and the denominator. We've got a J and a K left over, so it goes J and K. We've got J and, oops, no we haven't, we've got K there, K, L, uh, J, and the one that's odd is the one that's got the two indices together, not in the denominator, which is there. Okay, so there's my definition, and I think I've got everything I need to do to get started. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start out with that symbol there. You'll notice again, casually I'm using I, J, and K. For abstract indices, oops, abstract, abstract indices, but here I've actually named them. So there's no, um, because it's an R, I could have uh, one one of these guys here. So there's no way there's any uh, any summation going on because these are actual indices. I'm choosing the R or the theta index there. So let's start out with that one. And that equals... Well, I've got two terms to it. I've got a half g. Now, let me just be clear what I'm doing. i equals, we've got i, j, k, and l. Plus, remember we're summing over l. So l equals the both, both things in, both coordinates in turn, theta. So it's i, j, k equals r. They're all three of them equal to R because I is R, J is R, and K is R here. A half G times whatever it is. So let's just put that in. Um, oops. Let's try that again. R, R times di G by di X, K is R. Di G by di R, L is R and J is R, so it's di D R R plus di G R R again, di R minus di G R R by di X. Oops, that's di R. Is that right? Yeah, that looks right, except I've written an XR there, and I should have just written an R. There it is. So, of course, these two, I'm going to cancel in a slightly different colour. I'm going to cancel in red. Those two cancel out because they're opposite signs. GRR. Oh, actually, actually, that's stupid. Because 
RR is just equal to 1. There it is. 1. Oops, I'm in red. Change that to black. RR is just 1. So the whole thing, which I can cancel out. Oops. Oh, for goodness sake. The whole thing is just equal to 0. Why? Because G subscript RR is equal to 1. And differentiating that with respect to anything is equal to 0. Okay, so let's have a look at this next term here. And now what have I got? Now I've moved on. So now, now I'm moving on to i equals r, but l equals theta. And it doesn't matter what I put here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, because this term here is an off-diagonal element, so it's, it's a zero. So zero times anything is zero. So it's just zero. So what have I got? I've got Christoffel symbol r on the top and r and r both on the bottom equals zero. So I'll put that down here. R, R, R equals zero. Okay, and now I'm going to get rid of this and work on the next one. What's the next one I've got? Well, I'm just going to go through and cycle cycle them all in different... Uh, I'm going to do them all, all in different ways. We've done R, R, R. What I'm going to do now is Christoffel symbol R, R theta, which is, of course, equal to this theta r, because it's symmetrical in the lower two indices, equals a half g. Oh, I, get, I, get, I dare say I should do g i j as the superscript is 1 and r to the minus 2, 0, 0, because it's the matrix inverse of the metric tensor there. So what have I got here? I've got i, j, k, and l, and down here I've got i, j, k, and l. i equals r because the top index is equal to r. J equals, let's just put that one in brackets, J equals R, and now K equals theta, and L equals R, and down here I'm going to put L equals theta. So I'm summing over L, L equals R, L equals theta, and I guess I better write these in as well, equals theta. I'm going to run out of space. Equals a half G R, because I equals R, L, um, and that's plus here. Uh, R, R, so that's that term there, that's a 1, times die by die x, k, aha. So it doesn't matter what that term is there, I don't even need to look at it, because I'm, whatever it is, x, k here is theta, so it's die by die theta. So I can just ignore that, that's equal to 0, I'll cancel that out before I do anything else. That is 0, back to black plus xj, so it's die by die xj, kl, k is theta and l is equal to r, so it's 0 by die r, so that second term there cancels. What we're seeing here, lots of, it doesn't cancel, it's equal to 0. Excuse me, let's just go to red. And that cancels out there. Now go to black. Minus die. J is R and K is theta. So it's a zero again by die. It doesn't matter. Well, it's L, which is R. So again, it doesn't matter. So that first term there is equal to zero. And as I keep on saying, what we're seeing here, my interface is misbehaving. And I'm going to throw this computer through a wall in a minute. Here we go. That's equal to zero. Okay, so what's the next term here? Let's have a look at the next term. Just a minute. Back to black. A half g. Let me remind myself what I'm doing. I l. Here i equals r and l equals theta times a whole bunch of other stuff and it doesn't matter because we've got here contravariant, uh, uh, sorry, yes, contravariant indices, but off-diagonal elements, so it's equal to zero. So the whole thing is equal to zero. So we've got r, r theta equals zero, so I'll just put that in here, down here. Christoffel, ooh, I'm in red. Go back to black. r, r theta equals gamma r theta r 
equals zero. Right, next is we need gamma r theta theta. Yeah, what we're seeing here is lots of things are cancelling out because we've got a very symmetrical system, a very symmetrical space. We've got, well, it's as symmetrical as you can get, at a high degree of symmetry, because we've just got the Cartesian plane. Or, well, a flat plane. It's not a Cartesian plane, it's a polar coordinates plane. But what we're seeing is lots of things are cancelling out because we've got two conditions. We've got a very symmetrical space, and we're also taking advantage of that, symmetri that symmetry in terms of the coordinates. I could give you a really weird, curvilinear, horrible system, like the H theta one, uh, and not everything will cancel out as nicely. But what we're seeing is a intelligent use of the symmetry of this space. Right, what am I doing now? Uh, R theta theta. So there's only one of those. So we've got R theta theta equals... Let's get these right. I equals R j and k are both theta, j and k are both theta, and here l equals r and l equals theta. So it's a half g i l r r times di something by di theta, because it's k here, plus di something else by di theta, which is again, the reason I can say a question mark is that differentiating with respect to theta is going to be equal to zero. Equal to zero. That's a minus. Di by di r, and what have we got? We've got j, k, we've got g subscript theta theta. Ah, that's not going to be zero, look. Oh no, that's a superscript, it's going to be that. Plus a half g i is equal to r, l is equal to theta, times doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So what have we got here? We've got a half, g superscript r, r is just 1, times minus di by di r of g subscript theta theta, which is here, which is r squared. equals minus r. Ha. Equals minus r. So we've done half of it already. I want you to pick up that... I want you to pick up that these are quite difficult manipulations here. It's easy to get tangled up and lost in the indices, and this is a very, very, very simple example. So what's next? We've got theta r r equals what? Well, I've got to scrub all this lot out and start again. Let me just pinch in a little tiny bit there. So we've got theta r r that I'm trying to do here. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that. That's theta r r. Get rid of all these things here. Actually, I've got a better way. Look, watch, I can do this. Boink. Do that again. Enjoyed that. Right. Get rid of these. L equals r, L equals theta, because we're summing over theta. I equals theta. J equals K equals R, 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 and we've got a half G theta, L is equal to R, times something which I don't care about because that's a zero. Cancel it out. Zero. Back to black. Plus a half G theta theta, which is non-zero, it's equal to R to the minus two. Di G L is equal to theta. J is there, which is equal to R. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Because this is equal to zero. Oops. Back to black to do the next term. Di G, what are we on now? K L. K is equal to R. L is equal to theta, doesn't matter, it's equal to zero, look, it's off diagonal. Zero, back to black. Minus di g, uh, jk, look, it says jk here, 
uh, JK, uh, JK is RR by, it doesn't matter. Not because it's zero, but because di, G subscript RR is equal to one, so it's a constant. So that term vanishes as well. You can just uh, go back to red and do me cancelling. Bonk, cancel. So the whole thing equals zero. Because we've got a sum for different, I want, yeah, it's something quite, even now I find it quite, that's not mysterious, but it's decidedly non-trivial. These cancellations are not 2 minus 2 equals 0. These calculations, these cancellations are actually quite subtle for lots of different reasons. It's, it's bringing together lots of different aspects of the metric tensor and differentiation and summation, and the whole, the whole thing is decidedly non-trivial. Uh, where are we up to? Theta RR equals 0, so I'll put that down there. What's next? Uh, theta r theta. Okay. Okay. Let's get rid of these and put those in again from scratch. Actually, I can leave the I can leave the l's in because I'm I'm changing over that. Now I'm going to use my amazing deletion ability. There we go. Uh, forgot what I'm doing now. It's this one here. It's gamma theta r theta. Gamma theta r theta equals well i equals theta j equals r and the third index the k is equal to a theta so it's theta and theta let's see what that's equal well it's a half g i is equal to theta r times something and it's all zero of course plus a half g theta theta because l is now theta times something that might make a difference let's have a look Di G by Di something. That's X K and K is theta. So it doesn't matter. That's going to be a zero. Plus Di G K L. Uh, K L is theta theta by Di X J. Ah, that might work. Minus Di G uh, J K. A R theta by di. Oh, it doesn't matter because R theta. Let's just check that. That's a J and a K. And J equals R and K equals theta. J equals R and K equals theta. By di is something that doesn't matter because we've got a zero term there. So that's zero as well. So, uh, and this one was equal to zero. So it's a half G superscript theta theta is this term here, which is r to the minus 2 times di g theta theta di by di r of r squared, which is 2r, of course. So the 2's cancel, and we've got a factor of uh, uh, 1 over r. We've got 2r over r squared times a half, so that's equal to r to the minus 1 equals theta theta r equals r to the minus one we've only got one term left theta 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 equals i'm pretty sure i know what this is but we're going to have to go through it anyway um right so now i'm going to use my amazing uh deletion abilities here there we go backspace and now we're going to do oops uh, this is going on far too long look i've been going 18 minutes and uh, i haven't finished yet may as well do it a half g and look everything's now theta except for the summation variable which is there let's just write it out um i l so it's theta r times some stuff which doesn't matter plus a half g i equals theta and l equals theta so this one might work die by die l j l j so it's g subscript theta theta by die k oh it's everything's by die theta isn't it because look the differential is k j and l and here k uh, k j and l are all theta so this this bracket here is all equal to zero and this bracket was zero anyway this bracket this first one here was zero because we had we were multiplying by an off diagonal element of the metric tensor and here 
it's zero for a completely different reason. It's zero because the metric tensor does not have a theta term. You see there's only an R squared. So differentiating anything with respect to theta, uh, any, anything in the metric tensor with respect to theta, is going to give you a zero. So the whole thing is equal to... Ooh, that's red. The whole thing is equal to zero. Equals zero. Oh my goodness me. Look at all that messing about we've got to take, we've got to go through just to get the Christoffel symbols for the same.